So as we kind of alluded to just before we began the top 64 segment, Dinka Bui is on a runic variant with an engine. I don't think we've ever seen in the meta game before, have we, Alberto? No, never. I think that uh, it's very particular because basically he's playing also. I mean, in runic deck usually you don't ever see sprite in them, but he has a small package of sprite monsters and you know also a starter. And then on the other side, as Marcello was mentioning, he's playing this very particular four hard engine, which uh, we're really looking forward to seeing. And uh, I think Dinka showed us uh, over the last few YCSs how consistent the running deck is. And uh, I think he was the first player ever showing how powerful the Naturia runic back there then was. There it is, the ah, fossil yeah. deck. Yeah, this is, this is the main other portion of the deck he is playing. This actually searches Rex, Fright, Fur Hire. This is a dinosaur monster as part of the Fur Hire archetype which is one of the most uh, powerful support cards we've seen relative yeah. to an archetype uh, in Yu-Gi-Oh. And, and I think yeah. uh, one of the main reasons why also he plays this is because he plays, uh, you know, sprites, Ooh. so it's very good. He's a level 2. Droll and Lock! Oh, wow! <laughs> wow! <laughs> Droll and Lockbird in the main, Marcello. Yeah, and this is uh, amazing against the Dinka deck. I was about to say Jessica probably for the first time is uh, uh, the one reading cards. Uh, usually she's used <laughs> to her opponents reading uh, her cards, but uh, the drone lock uh, here is insane. It's particularly good against this deck. You know, in, in general, Runic is a draw deck. You know, you're deck thinning, you're getting those resources out, but also with the sprites, you can't search. And on top of that, the whole point of the yeah. Fur Hire engine is that it has this really powerful draw combo using Folgo and uh, the effect of the uh, ah. spell Grookey for Hire. Yeah. And now under Drone and Lockbird, you can't do anything. This and it feels yeah. so bad to special a jet here, doesn't it? Absolutely, every single card and even this engine, as we mentioned, uh, oh, gets you to some searches. But here we see uh, another plan uh, from Dinka, who obviously is not happy with this, but will try his best to stay in this game and uh, gonna go for the mannequin cat. Yeah, mannequin cat is a card we saw popularized a little bit last year. It has a it's such a diverse array of options because it is simply a special summon from your deck a monster uh, with the same attribute or type uh, that your opponent controls. And the secondary effect here, we see that resolving, uh, bringing the Droll and Lockbird that was discarded for by Jessica uh, back onto the field here. And uh, yeah, I guess we'll wait and see what the target is. It's, it's is that it's Recon Dompa. or Dompa? It's Dompa. Dompa, Dompa yeah. So a special summoning from the deck, an attribute that Jessica controls. That's a wind monster, Dompa being a wind. Special summoning out Dompa, Marksman Fire, another level two. Yeah. yeah. And the Dompa gets you a full higher from the end, so we could see the special summon of the Rex that has been searched previously on. And uh, it's, it's a pretty decent uh, start. He can also destroy a card on the field, uh, which obviously could be the draw, but... Uh, let's see, I really don't know where Dinka could go from here because the Droll and Lock shuts down also the Fountain, so it's definitely tough. But here we see what we are gonna, what we just mentioned. So he's gonna special summon Rex. And unfortunately yep. cannot use the Rex here. Typically it would get that uh, spell card, the Rookie for Hire, that helps you climb up into uh, some good draw power uh, as well as comboing with the Folgo bot. Yeah, Droll and Lock, but good meta pick, I suppose, do you think, this format? I mean, it seems like uh, in the I mean, these past few rounds that we have been uh, doing commentary on, it has been amazing. So maybe, yeah, I guess mm -hmm. so. This is the only time you don't want to see that is against Labyrinth, <laughs> am I right, Alberto? <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, but I think the draw lock in this format is, uh, is very powerful. Most of, of the decks played this week and were Ronix and... Uh, I mean, still here, Dinka uh, is managing somehow to put some pressure on her opponent. But uh, also, I'm very curious, uh, uh, Dinka extra deck is full of one-offs mm. so it would be very curious and asking the, him if he wins this uh, how he manages his matchup against cash no? yeah because it's weird because like you have all these level twos that combo really well into you know the sprite portion with gigantic and he's only playing one, one gigantic that, yeah. he's playing two folgo he values the second folgo yeah, yeah, over exactly. the second gigantic that's insane wow yeah. all right, going it's also for interesting yeah that he didn't go for the dompa destroying the droll so I would be surprised if uh, Dinka didn't know what Jessica is playing, especially because she was on stream. So uh, keeping the draw would make more sense against a deck like Kashtira, obviously. Yeah. But. So I think uh, maybe it's to do with the zones. Um, if you keep the draw and Lockbird in the middle, mm -hmm. uh, when you go for that Jasmine triangle, uh, you can't make the healer or the dryas to trigger the jazz I, I think maybe that's potentially what he's going for Probably. here but 
Uh, yeah, still going despite uh, despite the strong lockboard using the uh, Donner for hire. You know, we talked a little bit about it uh, throughout the day as a card that is, you know, that Diamond Direwolf exactly. effect, but um, it's a fur hire card. It actually does something else in fur hire. All right, and uh, that is then going to bring back uh, the Rex and the Dompa here. Is he actually using some targets? Because I know he's he's playing Thunder King Ryo, but is it in the main deck or just the side yeah, deck? Yeah, it's just in the side deck. Side deck, yeah. okay. Yeah. Because that card is obviously really strong in any mirror match, uh, mm -hmm. you know. And uh, let's see. Because now you just go with Masquerine and then uh, later on I think you want to go for the Unicorn in your opponent's turn, if you really feel like. But still, I, um, I mean, playing under Journal Lock, of course, uh, puts you in trouble, but uh, I'm guessing... If, yeah, I think, yeah, yeah this okay. is the beauty of Rex, mm. it has a secondary effect, you can banish it and get back a few rare cards from the graveyard or special summon a monster. So this is how you can pretty much link climb uh, and as he's, uh, as he's doing. So. Yeah, this Donner for higher axe is almost like a mole cricket to an extent. It's uh, a special summon of one and if you bring back a fur higher, you can get another uh, fur higher. And that is how he's able to just put up all of these link monsters Absolutely. through the Droll and Lockbird and the Mascarena as well. Still not done nice. with the turn Ooh. here. Nice starter is really nice here. Good one off. You think we just maybe end on a red or a carrot? Yeah, one of them. I think knowing that you're playing against uh, Rika, you might want to put up maybe the red. So mm. He's considering it, yeah. Obviously, not afraid. Ooh, okay. but the blue. Uh, blue, interesting, okay. Obviously, not going to be able to use the effect. Yeah, that Drone Lockbird has resolved. That's an interesting uh, summon, I would say. Fountain to wrap up the turn here, it looks like. Uh, no Runics played. Uh, oh, no, there was uh, one Runic in the graveyard, yeah. I think. So one more could be a draw, too, on Jessica's turn here. All right, well, um, this was an incredibly powerful and strong opening by Dinka Bui, uh, despite the Droll and Lockbird, which is such a uh, detrimental card uh, in this deck, because, like I said, this is a very... Uh, focused on the draw power of this deck to help complement those runics and uh, yeah well let's see if Jessica can do anything. Yeah, still interesting that he opted to go for the blue instead of the red. Yeah. But I'm not sure why. Yeah. Oh okay. all right low is a good start. Now the problem is Mascarena is going to be activated in response to the normal summon here going to go into yeah. a okay that's a big link summon are we going for underworld god that? no we're oh, actually going to go for fall go. Interesting. All right, so this Falgo now gets the trigger here using three different materials uh, for its summon. Exactly. So first of all, uh, you can special summon a Fury or Monster with a different type from the one you used from your deck. Also, if a card your opponent control is destroyed by battle or card effect, you can draw a card. And then uh, again, if you have three or more Fury or Monster, you draw two more. So you can draw three cards with it. And then comboing that with the fountain, that's a lot of disruption we can potentially get just on this uh, simple activation of the Mascarena into the Falgo. Very interesting, yeah. Because now it's where the Dompa comes into play. By using its effect, uh, he's able to destroy the Lochi and then pretty much draw free potentially with, uh, if he, depending how many he's used, because he used the. Uh, uh, yeah, a different type. Yeah, he needs a a, type, pretty much huh? a different type. Yeah, okay. he does have it. So. This is uh, wow. crazy. And it comes the Raffaele, how you know. <laughs> 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 yeah, he's going to be able to draw free. And as you mentioned, Adir, any runic card is going to be amazing here. Yeah, Raphael as well has a uh, bonus effect off the top of the deck. We can excavate. And it doesn't just add fur higher cards when it excavates off the top of the deck. It adds any card off the top of the deck. Yep. And this is again what I think the beauty of the. Uh, and there's Dinka's a runic deck. card. Okay. And just yeah. takes the freezing curses. That is absolutely incredible. Just a free freezing curses from the uh, champion for hire. Nice. And now he draws three and cards. There's three cards yeah. drawn. Crazy <laughs> opening. Even through this drawn and lock. Wow. All right. We so do see the Therian. Probably one of the better extenders in this deck is the Liliborea gets to target a plant in the graveyard, special summoning it back. 
I think we've never seen someone playing and then drawing a lock and then drawing uh, as many. <laughs> I know, <laughs> right? No. Yeah. I can't draw Flashing the Flashing fire. Yeah. Wow. Oh, it just has it. Yeah, we're going to pick yeah, up. There that's it is. It. Wow. So much power in this Fur Hire Runic deck, piloted by Dinka Bui in this top 64 of YCS London. Love it, love it, honestly. We mentioned uh, how unique uh, his deck is, uh, and uh, once again, um, usually throughout this event and the past ones, uh, Jessica uh, has been facing opponents that had to read her own cards, and, and this time she's facing the opposite problem. Gotta it's, read Falgo. Yeah, gotta read the, all of the Furiara cards from the Inca. They are pretty good. Yeah, no, the, uh, the support that Rex offers also being level two, such good synergy. No, but honestly, we really didn't didn't yeah. get to the point on which Dinka wanted to go. No, like uh, we were understanding maybe he wants to go, you know, for the masquerine and then unicorn. No, absolutely not. It just you know draw into four cards and then I mean his deck obviously I think was a surprise, but uh, yeah. he did incredibly well and then draw the lock. I think so. Absolutely, but now obviously the Dairo did pay some relevancy and uh, we're gonna see the opposite thing. So Jessica, she's gonna go first. What do you think she's gonna side for this matchup? Well, uh, we actually talked about it uh, yesterday, I think, a little yeah. bit, that Naturia Rose yes, Whip. Exactly, yeah. yeah. So if we can get to that Naturia Rose Whip, your opponent can only activate one spell or trap card that turn. That is a great and powerful way to shut down a runic variant yeah, like for higher. Outside of that, obviously, she's playing a combo deck. We mentioned it. With these kind of decks, you don't want to overside, and that's why most overside deck is for going second. On the other hand, Dinka has uh, more of a versatile deck. As we saw, uh, he does uh, main the Psyframe package. He drew the driver. Maybe this time uh, uh, he will draw into the Gamma. But outside of that, uh, he also has a few more uh, end traps in the side deck in the form of Ash Blossom. But outside of that, uh yeah, not I think sure. the, uh, the Bestials here are actually uh, pretty interesting, but Light and Dark yeah, not really going to no. have much, <laughs> much, uh, really. much relevance in this matchup. So I guess the Feather Duster is always yeah. nice in this matchup, but it's just a one-off, so I, I don't think he's playing the Thrust, right? So it's just no. actually the one-off. But yeah. It really feels like he's just going to have to try and fight through this with pure engine, isn't he? Absolutely, and uh, there are a few other options, but for example, it's very interesting that he's decided to side the two copies of Sprite Jet. Yeah, I mean, this is something that we haven't seen uh, in a while, I think, never, I guess, but uh, it's working out well. Absolutely. And, uh, and uh, regardless, uh, they're going to try their best. Uh, it's uh, all uh, down to this. Uh, whoever loses is out of the tournament. Whoever wins uh, will advance to the top 32. But our players are ready. So let's go back to game two. So, game number two here, Jessica most likely wanting to go first with this powerful plant combo deck that we've seen uh, pay off really well in the yeah. previous round, and will it work against such a unique strategy that Dinka Bui has managed to come up with okay. here? Okay, we start with Princess, I believe. Yeah. yeah this is the Rika Princess here uh, that should uh, yeah. get into the rest of the engine. And uh, the reading Jessica. begins. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Which is so interesting that Dinka Bui has to read this yeah. because he's become known as, I suppose, quite an innovator, hasn't he? Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah. Okay, it's uh, it's an interesting opening here from Jessica, who now uses That's a the powerful, oh, awesome. Wow! And oh! This is, oh oof, oof. That is not ideal. Uh, yeah, this could have been a bait because she did a normal summon, but nope, unfortunately, very slow That's start. That's a good start. And we see the Rex. Dinka Bui drawing the Rex for hire, normal summoning to then search the Rookie for hire. And you guys are going to uh, witness how this deck can also function. We saw what it did in game one going first, setting up that powerful end field. Despite the fact of the drawn lock, we're now, do we have a way to find 8,000 damage going second? Yeah. I think it is incredible anytime that uh, Dinka Bui puts his hand on a deck like this yeah. and then, you know. Invents, uh, you know, these crazy combos. Uh, yeah. Honestly, yeah. I think ooh, ooh, and this the red. red makes things a lot tougher. Should Jessica have any hand traps or disruptions? It's not going to do a lot when you have a sprite yeah. red on the field. 
I'm thinking back to, you know, Marcus Patel and uh, the rivalries they were siding. Unfortunately, that's not the case because that could have been really strong here. Yeah, you know, the uh, putting together of multiple different engines like this is uh, generally uh, quite risky into cards like Gozen Match and Rivalry of Warlords, but they actually op uh, opted not to go uh, with that in yeah, the side deck. Yeah, she's not time, right? using it, so uh, the face down maybe uh, is the Ricochet, because otherwise if she had the impermanence she would have activated it, I guess. Maybe, yeah. maybe. Maybe she wants to wait for Gigantic, it's it's possible, but definitely it is Dinka who is in the driving seat and now it's gonna use the Rookie. So tributing this Rex to special summon one from the deck with a level higher or below. And the Ash Blossom, Ooh, okay. okay. All right, Red is chained yep. to that Ash Blossom to negate and it will resolve to continue with the Rookie special yeah. summon. That's the incredible part with the Sprite package, isn't it? Mm -hmm. And here we see one of the one-offs, uh, which is the beat, Furire. Because as mentioned, you need uh, a level 3 or a level 1 from the rookie, as you tribute a level 2 monster. Yeah, so this uh, works out really well here because beat is uh, sort of the uh, uh, searcher for the deck when a fur hire is special summon that gives you another uh, fur hire monster, and then you can continue to extend past that point. Mm -hmm. All right, well, Dinkabui is going to try and think as to what we're doing next here. Seems a little bit stunned at this point as we try and navigate through this final back row and potential disruption that Jessica has. Seems like he wants to... Oh, and he has the start. Great, well, It really yeah. depends if he wants... If he has enough to push for damage, because otherwise he, will, he could play more conservatively. That's the thing, he doesn't actually need to go for game, does he? Yeah. Yeah, because, like, I mean, he's uh, so far ahead in this game already. Mm -hmm. So, Jessica, unfortunately, is left only with one card, and uh, the set card has not been activated, so our guess could be that uh, she's not holding any copy of Infinite Impermanence. Sprite Carrot is the search here for blue, so if there's any spells and traps that Jessica wants to activate, has to be now, otherwise that carrot will come down on the resolution of this search here yeah. for blue. Important thing to note as well about starter is that it inflicts damage to yourself as well as locks you into level, rank, and link twos for the rest of this turn. So uh, I think that's probably why Dinka was maybe thinking for just a moment, you know, is there anything else I can do before yeah. I lock myself down? Like, okay, we're just okay. gonna yeah. attack with uh, some weenie little monsters, I suppose, deal some damage and uh, just try maybe set up something. Uh, I think it makes sense. Yeah, I mean, the thing is, obviously, you wanna try to go for a game, but Jessica has used a lot of her resources, so even if you just end on a carrot and red, when she has a face down card and two cards in end at the beginning of the turn, uh, it's fine if you have, you know, double negation. So Yeah, double negation versus three cards. I mean, that one final card you yeah. have has to be uh, something <laughs> really absolutely incredible. Yeah. All right, deciding uh, now, what do we make here? Do we just limp, simply leave the red and the carrot <sighs> up? Do we want to maybe go for gigantic, get another body out? Honestly, it wouldn't surprise me if he just passed yeah. even. Like, in game one, yeah, yeah. he does, yeah. he does. Makes, Makes sense. sense. Makes sense. I mean, uh, he can smell <laughs> the blood. So let's see what the face down is. It okay, is it is the sheet. Yeah. So this will uh, probably, maybe, force out a carrot? activation from the carrot here. Yeah. That's exactly what's going to yeah, happen. It is. Uh, so two cars remaining for Jessica. Ooh, talent! Talent! Could have been a sick top deck on her side. She does need the draw power. I think her only card in hand there was an Ash Blossom. Yeah, so yeah trying to another Ash Blossom. Dig for some engine here to try yeah. and uh, continue playing. She really needs something. Yeah, see, she's just gonna make sure that, you know, some of these effects... Uh, or maybe the damage from the starter was not uh, counted, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, let's see. What can we do with even best case scenario? We top deck a singular copy of Lokai here versus a red, which is still online. We do have yeah. the negate. Uh, negate, but not destroy. I suppose that could be a redeeming factor here. So the uh, Ricka deck, obviously, so powerful just with the one card interaction of Lokai or unexpected die, but. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's not ideal. Okay. <laughs> Sunseed Twin is yeah. typically what you want to leave inside the deck. Um, so drawing the wrong portion of those seeds there, unfortunately, for Jessica. Uh, I yeah. think uh, 
you know, it's not insurmountable when you, because uh, I'm sure you've experienced there's a lot of combo decks in Yu-Gi-Oh where you need a specific piece to stay inside the deck. Yeah. Um, you can do some stuff, but it's never optimal when you yeah. draw the twin. Yeah, it was pretty much as you uh, when you drew the uh, the garden, right, with Brilliant Fusion. Good old days. <laughs> yeah, that's where the OG name comes from, Gem Knight Garnet. So Dryas being uh, special summoned here from the Link summon with the twin, and uh, just passing on it. It wow. looks like. Yeah. Unfortunate, and yeah, plays uh, back to the Inca. Who now access is Runic Engine. Which is an interesting decision because he's not gonna be able to access, you know, his battle face, and maybe there could have been a way to end this one. But um, I think unless he has, you know, 6,400 damage, uh, the dry ass gets the trigger when you take damage, and then you get to special yeah. summon a healer. I don't know. I suppose if you don't have enough through all of that, it's better to just set up even more. Absolutely. And here, as you can see, uh, we get uh, oh, wow. wow special summon back wow. a lot of the Furriers. Yeah, this is great from the Inca. I mean, we did mention as Donner, and we renamed it the, the new Diamond Direwolf. But in this deck, it actually uses all of its effects, and it's, it's even it's an incredible yeah. card for for hire. I mean, it's a special summon two back. Like that's that's really really powerful here. And you know, uh, we get to search the Raphael with the uh, uh, with the beat here. And uh, I don't think we have any more targets for the Rex, probably. We are only playing the one rookie, but hey, that already did its job in the last turn here, so... Yeah, amazing, amazing stuff from Dinka. Let's see this excavate. Oh, wow. <laughs> wow, even an Ash. It's such a good card because it adds anything you excavate. It's like a mini pot of uh, duality. Yeah. All right, full go justice for hire coming back again. Once more, these for hire cards, absolutely crazy synergy with this deck that Dinkabu has managed to come up with. Special summoning the Donpa out of the deck here. That's the level two as well as the uh, effect to destroy face up monsters. And now he gets back to Donner. Yep. Wow. With the Rex uh, <laughs> gonna just pop incredible. a card with Donpa. This is huge. And still managing to keep Red and Carrot on the field. Uh, it how really. Uh, how many draws is this? Is this is this another three here when the uh, destruction of the draw? Yeah. You're not really runic when you have four hours, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's an Ash yeah. Blossom on the Justice for Hire. All right. Could we'll get negated. Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. <laughs> there's no reason not to potentially just tribute off that Donpa. Well, uh, I don't know, I suppose Donpa is your disruption on your opponent's turn. Maybe. I mean, maybe... Uh, don't like, forget, everyone, we are locked out of the battle phase because yeah. of the Runic Flashing Fire used to special. I think Hugan. you don't negate just because of Nibiru, maybe. You oh, know. Do you think so? Yeah, mm. probably. I mean, you know, you you have so safe yeah. here. Yeah. Yes. Why? Why risk it? Yeah, I guess. There's, there's no reason to do anything risky. You've the game is all but over here. Dinka just needs to keep his cool and not do anything uh, completely drastic. That's why I think he's debating a lot about using this red, but probably he's gonna not go for it. Yeah, he doesn't go for it. Makes sense. Uh, and now we're gonna shut down the Nibiru because he access gigantic. Well, any other uh, disruption from the hand here, locking out by the gigantic sprite. You, neither player can special summon for the rest of the turn except level twos. That includes Nibiru for your opponent as well. Sometimes people uh, forget the uh, Cyframe Gamma. That's also uh, mm -hmm. potentially an option. And again, similarly to the previous turn. Wow. What a show from Dinka. And one more draw remaining for Jessica. Seems like an impossible battle, but... She's gonna try her best to stay in this top 64. It just uh, feels like such a mountain to climb at this point. Okay, Con Con, Con it is, uh, no more carrot for Dinka. Here it is, the quick play. Uh, uh, yeah. Rex from the graveyard, special summoning. Uh, and now we're going to activate the uh, Justice for Hire and the Raphael yeah. as a duster wow. to the hand. <laughs> <laughs> and now Folgo gets the trigger. Special summon. Yeah, from the you deck. can see Dinka and uh, Jessica both kind of smiling uh, at each other. I mean, this is uh, this is huge. What a deck is and this? Yeah, you drew three. three. <laughs> <cards>. <laughs> <laughs> wow. If you're in the top 64 and facing, <laughs> looking at this, you don't want to play against. Uh, it's absolutely Dinka. terrifying. Is that another princess? Uh, I think it's the last card in hand, isn't yeah. it? 
Yeah. She does have a princess in the graveyard, which potentially can be used. So, but outside of that, yeah, this is her last attempt at staying in this match. You know, as you mentioned, the synergy between the uh, fur hire cards just seems really, really good. I mean, drawing cards on your opponent's turn, very powerful if you can dig for hand traps. But of course, you know, the um, uh, fountain uh, works really well with it as well, because you can also see runics. Yeah, but now we see the princess from the graveyard, which maybe Dinka might have forgotten. But yeah, this is not enough. It's nice handshake from Jessica, but it's Dinka who wins 2-0 and, and advances to top 32. Nice, nice match, uh, round of applause from the crowd, uh, and uh, honestly, we mentioned at some point uh, some of these unique decks at Toulouse. Uh, there is only one winner, and uh, what a show-off from Dinka. It was one of the few decks we didn't see in action yet. It's terrifying. Do you think that it sometimes uh, approaches this stage of the format where uh, you have all of these different decks, and it's like, oh, I don't like this deck, this deck has this weakness, this deck has that weakness, and then somehow this incredible synergy, the strategy of this uh, runic for a higher deck. Do you think this is like the, the, the big uh, spike in power that we've developed in this format? Yeah, I think but I really. think also he's one of the, our players ever that uh, always manages, you know, the right way to find, you know, new mixtures, you know, because like yeah. we have seen some of our players in the top cut playing Live Twin, for examples, and uh, I think this is super, super scary, honestly, because uh, especially yesterday, Jessica showed us how powerful El Enrica deck was. So, yeah. I mean, congrats to the Inca who advances, but... Uh, yeah, but I think uh, better than us, uh, what can speak for ourselves are the numbers, uh, as we have ready the deck breakdown for top 64. So let's bring it up on the screen. Uh, and wow, wow. wow. Kastir doubled that is dominant. its percentage from 19% of the total field uh, Almost half of the top 64 is Kashtira, but there are 12 different decks as mentioned. And uh, yes, Pride keeping there. Probably this branded the one who performed the worst out of these top decks. When you consider the fact of the uh, the second most represented deck was branded, and then to look at that yeah. conversion rate into the top 64, it's doing really badly, yeah, isn't can it? Can you remind me of the deck uh, I picked for the tournament? Yeah, hey, it is. <laughs> <laughs> Not mean, a good call, Alberto. <laughs> Fair enough. But uh, as I was saying, Rika also showed a really good performance. Unfortunately, of course, Jessica is out. So one of these Rika deck is out. Uh, we'll see if uh, some of the others are still in competition. But regardless, uh, this is an amazing top 64 we have ahead of us. Uh, it has been a pleasure to be here with you commentating this round, but we still have more remainings. But before we jump into top 32, we have Ed ready with the winner, Dean Kabui. Thank you very much, Marcello. Yes, I am joined by Dean Carr right here, who's just won that first round of our top cut, the top 64 straight into the top 32 cut here at the 250th YCS in London. First of all, congratulations. So straight into top 32, you're quite uh, accustomed to top cutting by this point. How do you feel here in London? Uh, fine. Uh, uh, city is cool. The event is cool. Yeah. Good answer. That's what we like to hear. The event is cool. So the thing I want to ask first, obviously you're running Runic Fur Hire Sprite. The Fur Hire is quite an interesting choice. Can you talk to us a bit about the deck and why you chose it and how you've been playing it? Uh, yes. Um, I tested uh, different um, um, types of Runic decks. Um, and I figured out that the Fur Hire Runic Sprite deck is the most ex explosive one. Um, just resolving Rex into full combos like basically game against everything because you draw like usually six cards on both turns um, and the fair themselves they also give you uh, a negate a pop a lot of follow-up basically yes I mean it worked incredibly well and it's quite an interesting deck to see because we see a lot of runic variants but this is the first one we've seen with all the fair hires in it and it was very cool to see so let's go through some of that game against Jessica so Obviously went first, but you got drolled, but you did manage to play around that and you managed to set up a decent field. So game one, when you're getting drolled, what are you feeling in that moment? Uh, draw was kind of hard. If it was not for draw, I would have gone super nuts that turn. But um, IP Mascarina allowed me to play on um, on her turn. So I- With the Fogo. Yeah, with Fogo into draw three, into Runix, 
that there was just game. It was just game straight away because, yeah, deprived Jessica of most of the options that she had to play. So then she scooped, and then we got into that next one. You managed to ash her Rika Glamour, and that, that completely stopped the first turn, so it was just set pass. So when you're doing that, are you already thinking, I might have this in the bag? Uh, not really, because there was one set card. I was really afraid of uh, Rivalry of the Warlords. Um, so I tried to play it around it, and I knew she had not a lot of cards to play, so I just ended on uh, Red Carrot with follow-up and played around Rivalry. Um, so I, I ensure she can't play next turn, but the Triple Tactic uh, Talents um, punished me. Yes. Uh, but unfortunately, um, unfortunately for her, she didn't do that well, so I managed to win that game. Well, that was the thing. There was the Sunseed twin in hand, which is kind of a kind of a brick when that happens, and there wasn't the Sun Avalon Link on the on the field to be able to do anything. So just at that point, there was sort of no way out, and you basically just ended up taking the game. So you're feeling good. You're feeling confident. Is there anything going through these next top cuts that you're worried about going up against? Yes, uh, Naturia Beast. <laughs> oh, really? Why? I play a lot of spell cards. Yeah, it's probably going to be a problem. Beast apparently likes my cards. <laughs> no kidding. Well, congratulations. Wish you the best of luck in that top 32. We're going to give you some time to just decompress before you get into that next round. Guys, don't go anywhere. We've got a little Time Wizard tournament for you before we get into the top 32 cut. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back. We're here with more coverage here at YCS London. So obviously, we've done our speed duel tournaments, and now we're well into our time in the Time Wizard March 2005 tournament between our casters. I've got Tom and Leo here who are ready to battle it out to see who's going to be making their way into the final of this particular caster tournament. Gentlemen, you've done the deck cutting. Let's have a little bit of a high roll to see which one of you is going to be going first. OK, that's a six, and that is a three. Who's going to go first? Tom, you're going to go first. That's good, there's the fist bump, the fist bump of friendship. So I'm going to hand you guys over to Alberto, Marcello and Nadir, who are going to be your commentators once again for this round. Guys, take it away.